Okay. Hi, I'm Levi, and in my last video, I designed the split ring compound planetary gear set, and then I built it and I tested it, and I was unimpressed. This was a mechanism with a really high reduction ratio, so it could have done a lot, but ended up failing in a, in a failure mode that I was not expecting, and it seriously underperformed. There were some obvious additions I can make to this mechanism, which should make it a whole lot stronger. So today I'm gonna to be trying to refine this mechanism, put it to the test, and see what it can really do. And in the end, hopefully we'll break something. Before we get too deep into this, I should mention that today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is primarily a custom circuit board manufacturer. They do some really cool stuff with circuit boards. Not only are they beautiful and pristine, but they can also do things like aluminum circuit boards and flexible PCBs. But they also do a lot more than just custom circuit boards. PCBWay's reach has extended so far that they have pretty much every manufacturing technique you would need to develop an entire working product. So thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the improvements. The original design failed in a way that I was not expecting. My expectation was that the failure mode would be the teeth on the, on the gears would just shear right off. But instead it failed way before that point and instead the, the tall planet gears just bent inwards out of the way of the output ring gear. Those planet gears are really tall and they're only supported on the bottom so it wasn't very surprising, it made a lot of sense. And fortunately, there's several improvements that you can make on it to solve that pretty easily. There were two obvious improvements that I can make to this mechanism. The, the first is to put a freewheeling sun gear on the top to prevent those gears from bending inwards. And the second is a, just a carrier to keep them all firmly aligned and vertical. The only reason I didn't make those improvements in the first video is because it was taking too long and I needed to get the video out. But I did get um, maybe hundreds of people commenting, suggesting I should do those things. And like, well thought out, helpful uh, suggestions are much appreciated. But if you're gonna suggest something that like a hundred people have already said, maybe don't. Especially when it's something really obvious and even more so when it's something that doesn't actually work. By far, the most common suggestion was to add a freewheeling sun gear in the top gear plane. This idea makes a lot of sense. If the planet gears are trying to bend inwards, you kind of just stuff something in there so that they can't bend inwards. Unfortunately though, this solution just straight up does not work for this mechanism. The gears and planetary gear sets have to follow certain relationships in order for everything to mesh together properly. One of those relationships is that the number of teeth in the ring gear has to be divisible by the number of planets. The bottom gear plane is just a normal planetary gear set and it does follow this rule. There's 50 teeth in the ring gear and there's 5 planets, 50 is divisible by 5. But I'll remind you, this is not just two planetary gear sets stacked on top of each other, this is a, an entirely different beast. The top ring gear does not have 50 teeth but instead it has 49 teeth, but it still has 5 suns. 49 is not divisible by 5, so this can't be a planetary gear set. It means that the, the sun just won't fit, the, the teeth won't mesh. If you did want to put a sun in the top gear plane, it would look something like this. You might be able to get one tooth to mesh, but the rest of them aren't even going to come close. This is just an inherent property to this kind of mechanism, so this idea is out the window. The other solution is just to add a carrier, which is this thing on top. It's really simple, it's just a ring that attaches to all the gears to keep them in place, and that's about it. And being that this is the only working solution, this is of course what I went with. Now that we have our solution and it's all designed in CAD, I just need to 3D print the mechanism and put it all together. So I'm not gonna assemble this mechanism on camera this time uh, because I lowered all the clearances on all the gears, which makes everything a lot more difficult to assemble. But it, it paid off pretty well because I can't feel any backlash in this mechanism whatsoever. So if you watch the original split ring compound planetary, you'll note that this is pretty much the same thing. And it is, it all looks the same. The only difference is the carrier, of course. And the carrier is just a ring with some bearing seats in it, and then that's attached to the uh, planet gears just with some screws that go down through it. So it's a very simple modification, but hopefully it'll have some profound effects. And if you don't remember from the previous one, I'll give you a brief description on how this mechanism works. But the main operating principle here is that the top ring gear has one less tooth than the bottom. So in my case, it's 50 and then 49. The result of that is when a planet makes one full rotation, then it'll offset the top and bottom ring gears by that one tooth. So that's already so that's already a 49 to one reduction, and there's additional reduction compounded onto that due to the fact that the bottom is, again, just a normal uh, planetary gear set. So there's an additional reduction there. I'll turn it on for you, you can see it moving. Look at that. 
This is a pretty cool visual because you might be able to see the bottom sun gear down there is moving very fast. The carrier is also moving pretty quick, but it's moving slower than the sun. And then finally, the output ring is moving really slow. I think this is also, and I think because of those lower clearances, this uh, mechanism is also a lot quieter than the previous one. Anyways, let's get to it and put this mechanism to the test. So for testing this time around, I moved outside. So I have access to some more weight. I can get a better shot, hopefully. I'm mounting everything to a weight rack thing. I've also made a custom 3D printed fixture here. I attached the lever arm and we should be good to go. Everything is a little bit precarious. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of bit precarious. It's also some wind and you know, other people around and stuff. So hopefully this isn't too bad, but I've got my power supply my electronics, my potentiometer. I can control the motor. Uh, we should be good to go. Hopefully this time we can get a, a bit of a more energetic failure. I'd really like to see something just like shatter. That'd be fun. I do have high hopes for the carrier. I think it should make a pretty big difference. Starting out with five pounds. Should be pretty easy. Yeah, no problem. Now we're moving up to 10 pounds. This is the maximum we did before, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we're still lifting it. I'm hearing a little bit of clicking from the mechanism. Hopefully uh, we don't have a premature failure here. 15 pounds. Let's see if we can beat the previous one. Oh, uh, the motor stalled. That's what happened there, I think. You can't see the power supply we were at 1.4 amps, which might be the max it can do at 12 volts. It's rated for 24, we might need to crank it up. I almost wonder if it might be just as valuable to test this without any motor current, just the mechanism. Okay, we're at 24 volts. Let's try again. It doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like that? <laughs> I think it might be detecting an overcurrent and then it's uh, stopping because of that. I'm gonna say with the motor, it is capable of 15 pounds. It moves it a little bit and then it just stops. For the rest of testing, I'm going to ignore the motor and it's just gonna be a mechanism test see when I can get something to break because I really want something to break. Oh, you probably can't even see the weight down here, but it is there. Moving up to 20 pounds and we drop it. 20 pounds, not insignificant weight. We got 25 pounds. Oh, something's gotta break, come on. What the heck? That's awesome. Here's 30 pounds. Oh. You can't even see this weight, can you? It's down there, I assure you. Look, see, it's right there. Look at that weight. One thing is for certain, it's definitely not back drivable. Oh, we got bent teeth. Oh, I gotta show you this. Those teeth are totally bent. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I wanna see. Oh. Uh. Okay. Well, it broke. Oh yeah, that is fun. That's what I want from a failure. That makes me happy. Well, I set out today to break something and I broke something. The first casualty was our lever arm. It didn't fare too well. And you, oh wow. Uh, you can already see they're not very evenly spaced anymore. Are now engaging with each other. That wasn't the case. <laughs> Oh, wow. oh my goodness. So this is, this is our carrier with the, the gears attached. The, the bearing seats are totally destroyed. So the, the bearings are just kind of, are barely being held in there. But the key thing is look at those gears. Those are destroyed. I mean, you can see it went from teeth to just totally flat right there. That's gnarly. This, this is really cool. This is exactly what I wanted to see. I wanted to see some gears get turned into wheels, and this is certainly in the spirit of that. I'm really happy with how those tests ended up. The final torque ended up being um, around 20 Newton meters or 14.8 foot pounds. And the original mechanism was like five foot pounds, so we've increased that by like three times, which is pretty, pretty impressive. But in the end, we reduced a really rigid zero backlash mechanism into a uh, wobbly mess, which makes me happy. So it really seemed like there was a lot of people who wanted to see me do this, make this improvement and see how it went. So I hope you're satisfied because I know I certainly am. 
My intention was for this to be a shorter video. Um, I guess we'll see how that ends up. I'm also planning on doing another shorter one, maybe another one after that, because I've got some big projects that I've been working on for a while um, that, I'm, that I'm trying to finish up. In addition to that big project, I've also been wanting to get into circuit board stuff, which means uh, new learning and new software. Um, I'm somewhat familiar with circuit design, but there's some, some specific things I'd like to tackle, which I've never done before. So all that new takes a lot more time. If you'd like to support me and my projects, or if you'd like to just get the CAD files for this new and improved uh, split ring compound planetary gear set, or the CAD files for a bunch of my other projects, then you can do so via Patreon. I also have a Discord server where a bunch of engineering-minded people congregate to talk about projects and ideas and stuff. That's a lot of fun. I also have an Instagram where sometimes I put pictures of, of stuff I'm working on. All those things will be linked in the description. I'd really appreciate it if you checked them out. Uh, thank you again to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. I hope you got something out of it. Hope you enjoyed it. And, but that's all I have for now. So, bye.